Welcome back to America Decides. Good to have you with us. The House has just passed a short-term funding bill that will keep the government running through December 20th. The Senate is expected to vote on that bill this evening. The package did not include the so-called election security provision known as the SAVE Act that former President Trump has insisted Republicans tie to this measure. Our Nicole Killian joins us now from Capitol Hill. So, just to state the obvious, Nicole, it is not a problem in this country for undocumented immigrants to vote. It doesn't happen in anywhere near the numbers, suggested or otherwise, from proponents of the so-called SAVE Act. Just to clarify that, that's not in this stopgap spending bill that the House passed. How much help did Speaker Johnson in the end need from Democrats to get this done? Well, he certainly needed help from Democrats uh, more so than Republicans in his own party. You know, we saw a much bigger split among Republicans. Democrats almost unanimously supported this package in terms of those who were in attendance, whereas we, there were some 80 Republicans uh, that did not. So that just gives you an indication of kind of where uh, the chips landed. And Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries has made clear that time and again, uh, Democrats have to come to the aid of Republicans and Speaker Johnson to get just basic funding packages passed because uh, there isn't enough support within uh, the Speaker's own party. So uh, that's what we saw transpire again with uh, this approval of short-term funding. The question is, will there be yet another uh, funding fight at the end of the year right around the holidays? Translation, the uh, majority, effective majority in the House, at least on matters of this kind, appears to be the Democrats. Uh, what will happen and in what timeline in the Senate? Well, the Senate is expected to take this up in short order, but, uh, you know, the bigger hurdle or the bigger lift was in the House. So now that this is cleared, uh, it's almost inevitable that the Senate will move forward uh, with this package. In fact, Leader Chuck Schumer even expedited this vote by securing a time agreement, which will allow uh, the Senate to take this up relatively quickly. Nicole, you spoke to... Michigan Democratic Senator Gary Peters, who leads a Senate panel that found multiple failures committed by the Secret Service leading up to the first assassination attempt against former President Trump. What did he tell you? Yeah, that's right. He is the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, which conducted this investigation and launched this investigation into Butler right after it happened. They had the director of the Secret Service testify before the panel in late July. And so this was an interim report that the committee put out that found sweeping failures on the part of the Secret Service, whether it was planning, communications, uh, law enforcement coordination, and other breakdowns that likely contributed to the assassination attempt against the former president. Take a listen to what Chairman Peters told me. What do you believe was at the core of these failures? Well, there, there certainly were a lot of failures, uh, and every single failure uh, could have, was preventable. Uh, and had the, any of those failures uh, not uh, happened, uh, we could have avoided uh, what uh, this horrible uh, incident. But it all starts with the planning, uh, inadequate planning. There wasn't a comprehensive plan that, that uh, really took into consideration that you had a building uh, that was uh, not being uh, sufficiently uh, guarded. Uh, it had a direct line of sight to the stage with the former president. Uh, that should have been a priority for the Secret Service to make sure that they secured it. And it wasn't. And then what we found is that there was a lot of finger pointing. The Secret Service said, well, it was local law enforcement. Uh, they were supposed to do it. Local law enforcement said we weren't told to do that. We didn't necessarily even have the manpower. But ultimately, that's the responsibility of the Secret Service is to make sure that a shooter does not have a clear line of shot. There were also some basic malfunctions of equipment, radios, drones. How was that possible? Yeah, the, the uh, equipment malfunctions, uh, like the drones, was particularly significant. So uh, we, we know drones are uh, a significant threat that we have to be concerned about in all sorts of events. Uh, there are, is counter drone capabilities that the Secret Service has, but on that day, it wasn't operating properly. In fact, the witness talked about being on a, on a tech line trying to solve the problem for several hours. And during that time, the shooter actually had a drone up in the air, uh, was surveilling uh, the area. Uh, and had the, the counter drone been operating, uh, they would have been able to detect that. 
Senator Peters told me that their probe continues and that they are looking to interview other individuals associated with this incident. And he also didn't rule out the possibility that the committee could expand its probe into looking into that second assassination attempt against the former president at his Florida golf club. The Secret Service, for its part, said that the findings from this interim report mostly align with its own internal review that's been underway and said that it understands the weight of its mission. Major. Nicole Killian on Capitol Hill. Thank you very much.